All right, so you bought an HP Omen 30L. You're thinking about buying one. You're thinking about buying an HP Omen uh, OEM card. Whatever it is, this is the very fast, very informative review, tips and tricks guide for how to get maximum thermal performance out of this card and why it's actually a great buy. So, getting right into it. Here's the card. It comes like this. It has two 8 pins, comes with a goofy little shroud, which you're going to want to remove, and it comes with this anti-sag bracket, which you're going to have to remove to take the card out of the case. Moving right along. Here's the card without the backplate. The backplate's made of a weird metal-y material. It's not super solid. It's not great. Um, this is the back of the 3080. The 3090 should have thermal pads, but the 3080 didn't come with them. Neither will the 3070. Um, here it is. Moving along, here's the back plate. Um, this is a strange material here. It's not thermally padded or anything, but it's a different feel than the back of this. Like I said, very strange. Um, moving right along, feel free to pause and uh, take a better look at any of these slides if you want. Um, this is the default uh, cooling array. So actually I should say this is not the default paste application. This is paste that I added separate. Um, the heat array, or cooling array rather, has four nice big heat pipes. It's very, it's fine, it's great. And it just needs a couple of modifications to make it work. So, um, this is not the solution slide, this is just the call out slide. The problem here is that this black heat array right here, which goes on top of the PCB, in between the PCB and the cooling array, doesn't make great contact with the cooling array in these four locations. And as you would have it, these four locations are the ones that are most important for cooling the VRAM. So this is a problem with the 30 series. It's a big problem for mining. It's a problem for gaming. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. Um, all right, just two more pictures, or rather three more pictures here about the card. This is the default pad application. Um, you can see these ones highlighted here. These are the VRMs. They get this thin little pad here. The VRMs don't ever get to make direct contact with the cooling array. They have these little heat fins right here that the fans blow on, but they don't get actively cooled um, by the heat pipes. They just get cooled by airflow. Anyway, um, they also have memory chips right here. This is the default paste, or rather pad, application for memory chips. And as you can see, the heat is being transferred through these pads from the VRAM to this black heat sink. Heat sink. Um, and that's about that's about where it ends in the default configuration so that is a problem finally this is the default shroud I ended up removing this shroud I recommend you do the same for two reasons one uh, well one reason it's loud it's terrible and it doesn't cool as well as two 120 millimeter fans um, this top fan header right here is the RGB header this bottom header is the three pin fan header I believe um, I could be wrong One's RGB, one's fans, it doesn't matter. All right, finally, here's a picture of the PCB. Um, this is a reference PCB, as I will go over later. This is the default layout. This is so you can pause and look at it if you are curious. All right, let's get into the fixes. I have four fixes for you guys. They're gonna make a huge difference. Fix number one, um, the problem, no contact between this black heat sink array and the active cooling plate right here. The solution, you are going to want to put thermal paste, not thermal pads, but thermal paste in a very thin or thick line, it doesn't really matter, um, on this black heat sink right here before reassembling your cards. You're going to do this for one big reason, so that heat can transfer from the VRAM into the black metal heat sink into the um, copper heat sink over here, and you're going to get active cooling on your VRAM. As is in the default configuration I've gone over, it does not make great contact between this black heat sink here and this copper heat sink here, um, which results in very high memory junction temperatures during mining. Um, I'm talking like 108C. So this was the default performance out of the box. It was really bad, um, and this needs to be addressed if you are seriously going to use this card for any application, really. So needs to be thermal paste, not thermal pads. I want to make that clear. Thermal pads cause clearance issues between the GPU die and the uh, part of the heat sink that goes on the GPU. I tried putting 0.5 millimeter pads all around these and there was no contact at all between the GPU die and the heat sink. My card would crash on startup. So don't use pads, use paste. Um, don't 
you know, glob it on, uh, but don't be too stingy either because you are going to need to transfer a lot of heat out of this black heat sink into this copper one. That's fix number one. Fix number two, you are going to want to add thermal pads to the back of the PCB so that heat can transfer more efficiently from your PCB and from the VRAM in particular to the back plate. This is a pretty standard mod. Everybody should know about this. I believe the 3090s come with pads pre-installed, um, but one millimeter pads will do quite nicely here. Fix number three, you're going to want to repad and repaste the actual PCB. Again, this is a very common mod. A lot of people have talked about it. These are all one millimeter pads, so you're going to want to add thermal paste here. You're going to want to add one millimeter pads to uh, the 10 VRAM modules over here. And if you want, you can replace the default pads on the VRMs here and here. Those are also one millimeter pads. I replaced all using 13 or 12.8 watts per meter Calvin pads and saw a pretty good um, VRAM junction temperature reduction of about five or six degrees C. Um, just, just quickly, like this is the big one though, the, the paste in between the black and the copper heatsink. This was a 10 C reduction during mining. Um, so anyway, moving on, those are the three so far. The final one is the D-Shroud mod. The problem here is that the default fans are super loud and they sound like a jet engine when they spin up. They're really bad. Um, the, you can add two 120 millimeter fans side by side right here. You can see I have it secured with a bit of fishing twine and just use fan splitters to go ahead and plug everything into the motherboard. You do need to um, have something plugged. You do need to have the case fans plugged into the motherboard. Um, so you're going to need to use a splitter, like a 3 to 1 if you're using two fans, or a 2 to 1 if you're using PWM fans here. And that's because, um, for some reason, the motherboard and BIOS um, kind of protest if the case fans aren't plugged in, and it forces you to manually say OK or check a yes box every time you boot it up. Um, I use three pin fans just because they blow at a constant speed. I think it's like 1200 RPM. It's dead silent. It's really cool. Um, I highly recommend. And here are my results during mining. So this is about an hour straight of mining. Um, these, are, these are the stable temps and hash rates. So as you can see on my 3080 card, I am getting the expected 101, 102 hash rate um, out of this card at 219 watts. Um, that's a little higher than some, lower than others. That's what I like. Um, I'm very happy with this efficiency per watt, and I'm very happy that I'm getting the full hash rate out of this card, um, which has a really bad OEM cooling solution. Here are my afterburner settings. Um, my core clock is set to 1245 megahertz, um, and here are my memory junction temperatures, which are 96C. So those I deem those to be perfectly acceptable. I don't really know the long-term effects of temps that high 24-7, um, but it was sure a lot better than 108C, which I was seeing before. So um, that is the summary. This will work for the HP OEM 3070, 3080, and 3090. Um, I highly recommend all four of these modifications. The final point of this video, I just want to call out the fact that this is a reference PCB. Um, this user on Reddit, Ego Roar, that's E-G-O-R-O-A-R, um, conveniently posted on r slash water cooling his results of applying the EK reference uh, water blocks and backplate to his HP 3090. Um, so shout out to this guy confirming that reference PCB status. Um, thanks so much for watching this review. Hopefully it helps you get better temps and um, I mean the HP is a great card if it's cooled correctly. So good luck.